Some people will know me, but some people might not, um, because you might share this with some of your arty friends. But my name's Ruth Clayton, and I work at Farfield Mill in Sedburn and have a studio there. But obviously, at the moment, like everybody else, we're all on lockdown and we're all cooped up in our own little houses. And I don't have a lot of gear with me, but I thought it might be nice to um, set a challenge, an arty challenge for anybody out there who would like to do a little bit of um, creative work with me. Uh, it's not for the brilliant artist, it's for anybody, including the arty child. We used to do it with year sevens when I was teaching at school. Um, and it's a fun way of creating a nice design. It's a design based on um, Kandinsky. Now, Kandinsky was uh, an abstract artist, so you've obviously got to appreciate abstract art to, to be able to do this. So, uh, But if you do like that sort of uh, artwork, then maybe you will enjoy this. So you won't need lots of gear, you will just need a pencil, pen, but I will explain all of that once I start. So um, I hope you'll join me and let's just see what we can create. So this is the still life that I've chosen. It can be anything. You don't need to have things that are matching. You know, I've got my dad's old oil can and an old pop bottle from our family, pop business, um, a couple of bits of china and some flowers and, a, and my, my little snow globe here. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything in particular. You can literally grab anything. Um, but the thing that we're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at this still life, but not looking at what you're drawing. That's, that's the fun bit. But that's what will create this lovely abstract feel. So bear with me, it's going to be great. So I'm just using wallpaper. You can use anything. Um, but I thought wallpaper is as good as, as, as anything else. And you can see my little setup there. So I'm going to go and sit down now and hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Okay, so here's the setup here. But this is what I'm going to be drawing on. But I'm not going to be looking at what I'm drawing. I'm going to be looking at that. I might even set it further, further away. Okay. So you can put your paper, you can look at your paper first of all and think, right, well, I'm going to start off. I'll start off with this jug. So I'll put my pencil here. But then you don't look at your hand again and no cheating people. Okay. Uh, so you'll probably all be laughing away um, because I can't see now what I'm drawing. The problem is when you take your pencil off the paper and then you want to put it somewhere else, but you don't know where to put it because you can't look. This is the um, little snow globe now. <laughs> You're probably watching this video going, really? Good fun this, children like doing this, this is I used to do it with year seven children. So if you've got a child who's quite arty, then they're going to enjoy this because it's a laugh. But actually at the end, you get some fantastic abstract results. You have to like abstract. That's probably about it. Oh my goodness, right, okay. So that's what you end up with. So what you do now, I've already started, 
um, you've rubbed out little bits that you don't want. But now we do something called varying the weight of the line. So you can see I've started here with the single line, but then I've thickened it. So I've varied the weight of it. So to do that, you know, you've got a line here. You can just start off by going over that line, but you might want to make it thicker at one end. So you can put a little end on it and then you can just do a double line like that and then literally fill it in. Okay. Um, you can do that wherever you want. So here I might do a single line there, a single line along here, and then I'm going to thicken up this corner here. Just a little bit. It's going from thick to thin and then thick again. And also if there are some very small areas, you can just literally fill them in. Sorry, Kandinsky would have done that. He had lots of little squares, little circles, little dashes. It didn't mean anything, um, but they just added to the piece of work. So you can fill little bits in like that. Um, so then you do, this is what we used to say at school, we used to call them T-junctions and V-junctions. Uh, so we used to say to, um, let me just try and find one first, here's one up here, okay. If you were a little car driving along a road and you meet, and meet another road, you've got a junction there, you've got a T-junction. So make that T thicker. So you can even do yourself a T like that. But then you don't want the ends. You don't want to see the ends. So then you fade those ends out to a single line like that. So it's a gradual change from the thick line at the junction to going back to your single line down here. You've also got like crossroads, so we could actually include crossroads as well as T-junctions and then fade that out. Like that. Okay. So you can get quite creative. You can put little flourishes on things. I'm going to make it thicker there where the two lines cross at the crossroads. It's not very neat because I'm actually holding my phone with the other hand. I'm doing this on my own, you see. It's all very, it's all very amateur because I'm not in my studio and I don't have my watercolours or anything. So this is just something that I thought we could do because I'm self-isolating at the moment because I've got some weird symptoms of a loss of smell and a loss of taste. So I'm on day 10 of not tasting anything. So um, next Wednesday, I'm, once I've been at home for 14 days, I'm hoping that I can nip down to the mill and just pick up my paints and then I can maybe do some watercolour demos with people if they're interested. So we've got the wear varying weight of line. We've got some nice T-junctions happening here. And then there are also V-junctions. And V-junctions are, let me just find one. There's one. Um, just one. Yeah, corners. Were there any little corners like that? You can just make those thicker. And then gently fade them out to a single line. Obviously, at the end of this, you'd rub out any pencil lines that you have visible. And that's going to take you some time, OK? But you can see how it's beginning to build up. Um, and it's, it's taking on more of a three-dimensional feel, even though it's still just a linear piece of work. OK, off you go. I'll do a bit more of mine and I'll see you later.
there you have it. Um, and you'll see that I've just, there's a few little pencil lines here that, you know, as I was doing it, I was thinking, well, actually, I don't, I don't want to, to do those little bits. It looks nice without it. So then you would obviously rub out any pencil lines that are still visible. Okay. Now I'll fiddle around for the last 10 minutes trying to get the lighting better, but it's not brilliant. I understand that, but you know, we have to do what we, we can at the moment. Um, so I've got my design and it'll probably be side on to you, but it doesn't matter now because it's just very abstract anyway. Uh, it's a question of adding some colour now. So, you know, go back and remind yourself about the Kandinsky pictures. Um, but, you know, maybe don't spend too long worrying about your colour scheme. But, you know, you could if you wanted to use all the primary colours, red, blue and yellow. Or you could use the secondary colours, which are green, purple and orange. Or you could just use warm colours, all the reds and oranges. Or you could use cool colours. Um, and I'm doing none of those. I'm going to use purples and greens because I like purples and greens together. Uh, and then we'll see what we come up with. So I'm going to use coloured pencils. I think coloured pencils will be the best thing for this if you have any. If you only have a few, then obviously they're the colours that you're going to be using. Um, so coloured pencils, uh, just in case you've never really used them before. You can actually... Uh, mix colours you can you know you can put one colour on top of another um, I don't know whether I'll do that or not so but you can fade out as well so I've started here with a purple and I'm pressing on a little bit and actually the, the you know this other side of this wallpaper actually the the surface is pretty good because it's got a little bit of a tooth on it uh, which is quite nice so just start somewhere and you don't have to fill in the whole of a shape. So, for example, you're better doing it less gently to start with and just keep going backwards and forwards, what they call cross hatching. You know, and if you keep cross hatching over an area, then it's going to get darker anyway. And then you could just fade it out. So, by fading it out, you just release the pressure of your hand. You know, so this is going to take some time. This is going to keep you busy, but that's the whole point. <laughs> keep everybody busy and get these days passed by. And uh, you know, I've got a bit of a rule for myself now with all this lockdown that I split my day up into little things and I don't allow myself to put the television on until I sit down for my tea. Um, and I don't read the news. I read it once a day to find out what's happening or I listen to the update once a day and that's what I've decided to do. Uh, once a day is more than enough. Um, so yeah you can see there that I am blending that out so it'll just disappear. To nothing. I hope you can see that on the video. Um, yeah, then I might just try somewhere else, but I'm going to use some greens as well. So <clears throat> I'll just do a green one. Um, maybe I'll do the green in here. That's not sharp enough. You need nice sharp pencils for this. Press on a little bit there. And then I'm going to fade that out again. Well, I've done a bit more, as you can probably see. But what's also nice is whatever colours you're using, I actually introduced a pale blue as well but to actually overlap the two colours sometimes because you'll get different shades. You'll get, you know, if two colours mix together, you'll get a different colour. So I've done a bit of my lime green here, but I've got like this purpley pink colour. 
uh, which if I just put that over the top of that very, very lightly in places, maybe just in the odd corner, you'll see it's like almost like a, I don't know what colour you would call that, more like an aubergine sort of colour. You can see it here. Um, yeah, so that that's quite nice to do is to overlap the colours that you're using, but all very, very gently and very delicately because you'll get even more colours uh, appearing. Uh, and you can also, if you've got shapes like this, um, you can work outside of the shape. So, you know, I've just done a little bit of pink here around the line and then just fade that fade that out into nothing. You know, so around here I could I could colour into the background if you like. So the background is becoming part of the image. You know, it isn't just the individual objects anymore, it's actually you're filling in the spaces, what they call the negative spaces too. And that's the finished design. So, you know, it might not be perfect, but it's just um, a simple way of creating your own Kandinsky style um, piece of artwork, if you like. And uh, it's a bit like mindful colouring, you know, like these colouring books. So if you've enjoyed it, if you've got something from it, then perhaps you'd like to share it with other people because we all need a bit of something to do at the minute. Thank you again. Thank you.